Hey guys, it's Charlie. I hope you're well. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some of my favourite books of the year so far. I know I'm kind of late with this, I usually do it in June, so obviously that marks halfway through the year. But you guys know how far behind I am with my videos. And I was thinking about not doing one at all, but I really like doing these for me um, as much as anyone else. Because I really like looking back when I do my end of year favourites to see how many have changed. Um, so, yeah. But before I get on with showing you the books, I just want to apologise if you can hear a little bit of a whirring noise in the background. It is so hot in the UK right now. I know it's dramatic, but it feels like there's no air. And I tried to film this video with just the window open, so it was nice and quiet. But... It still just wasn't cool enough. I was so hot I couldn't concentrate. So I've got my fan on now. But I've got it on the lowest um, setting. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it won't be too much of a distraction for this video. I just, I can't, I can't film without it. But anyway, that is enough rambling. I'm going to show you my favourite reads of the year. They are not in any order because it was hard enough for me to choose without putting them into order. I can never put these things into order when I do favourites. Um, I loved them all equally okay let's get going so i've got my little um pad here because half of them i don't actually have physical copies of because i read them on um net galley and one because i have lent it out to someone so i'm gonna start with the four that i do have physical copies of so the first one is a middle grade graphic novel, which I don't read too many of, to be honest, middle grades. It's only like every, every now and again a middle grade will come along and really pique my interest. And this one did. Um, and I'm so glad that I did pick it up because obviously now it's in my favourites. I loved it. Um, and that is Camp Midnight by Stephen T. Siegel and Jason Adam Katzenstein. Katzenstein, I'm sorry if I butchered that name. So I'll just start off by showing you what the artwork is like in this. It's really, really nice. It's quite a different style, quite a lot of colours. Um, and this is about a young girl called Skye, whose parents have recently split up, and she, she isn't dealing too well with it, really. And uh, she is... It's the summer holidays and she's going off to stay with her dad and her stepmom. But when she gets there, they tell her that they're sending her off to a summer camp because they want her to socialise and make some friends because she doesn't really seem to be doing much of that. But she ends up getting on the wrong bus and going to a camp called Camp Midnight, obviously, um, which is a camp basically for things that go bump in the night. So monsters and ghosts and vampire things. And um, although it is a creepy book because of that, it is mainly a story about learning to love yourself for everything that you are, for all your differences, even if other people think you're weird, just learning to love everything about yourself. And about opening yourself up to other people and making friends and... Yeah, it's just, oh, my camera's gone really dark. I apologise for that. The sun's just gone behind the cloud. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. I read it in one sitting and it was just fun and sweet. And um, yeah, really, really enjoyed this. So that is my first favourite. My next one is a really recent read. And I think I actually mentioned this in my last video. So I think I showed it in that haul. Um, well, both books in this duology, I love them both, I read them both, but um, I just picked up the first one so I had something to show. And that is Killer Instinct by S.E. Green, and the sequel is called Killer Within. This is about a 17-year-old girl called Lane, who is obsessed with serial killers and their inner workings and why they do what they do. And um, she also has urges herself, so she becomes... A bit of a vigilante, nobody knows it's her, but the newspapers call this person the masked saviour. And she basically goes around and she gets revenge on people that have committed crime in similar ways 
to how they committed the crime. So, for example, there's one guy who is really cruel to animals. So she does, like, every cruel thing that he's ever done to an animal to him. Um, so you've got that kind of story going along about her urges. But then another story starts when she is contacted by a serial killer called a decapitator, um, at claiming that he knows that she's the Mars saviour and all this kind of stuff. And it was just so good. It had everything in it that I could want. It was gory, it was fast paced, it kept me on the edge of my seat. And I just wanted more and more. I read the sequel straight after this. I read them both within about a week. And I just so hope that S.E. Green writes some more in this series because I will be picking these up without a doubt. Such a fantastic duology. Can't recommend this highly enough. The next one, this was probably my most difficult decision because it is Fool Me Once by Harlan Coben. And the reason it was difficult is because I have read a lot of Harlan Coben books this year, as you guys sort of know, and I've loved every single one of them. So to choose one was really, really difficult. But this is the one that has um, <clears throat> stayed with me the most. So I decided to choose this one. But just read any of his books. They're all fantastic. Basically, this one is about a woman when the book starts, she's at her husband's funeral, and we don't know much about what's happened. All we know is that he was murdered, basically. And um, her friend, after the funeral, gives her a nanny cam, and she's like, you know, you're on your own now, you've got a young daughter who is at home during the day, like, during most of the time, with the nanny. You know, you can't be watching her every second of the day, you need to have something to keep you safe especially now your husband has been murdered. And she's kind of, she doesn't really want it, but she just goes along with it anyway, and she puts it up. And the story starts when she's watching back some of the nanny cam footage, and she sees her husband playing with her daughter. And suddenly she's like, you know, how, how is that even possible? And it's about her investigating what is going on. He came from this really privileged family, and they've got all these secrets. And it was just a complete and utter page turner. I started this one evening while I was waiting for my dinner to cook. And I was so enthralled with it, I didn't even hear the oven timer going off. And before I knew it, I'd read like seven, eight chapters. It was just like, I had to know what was going on. It's one of those books where you, you think, I'll just read a few pages and you end up reading a few chapters. So good. Uh, what I love about Harlan Coben's books is... His characters are really relatable, and um, because they're relatable, and you you like them, you kind of you care more about their story and what's happening to them. And that that's my favourite bit about his books. And um, there was a, I didn't guess the twist in this book. I, I thought I had lots of times, but then something else happened. Curveballs came out, and yeah, I just didn't. It, but it was just fantastic. Absolutely loved this book. And then the last book that I have physically, I'm actually cheating on a little bit because I am currently reading it. I'm only like halfway through it. But I know that it will be one of my favourite books of the year, if not my favourite book of the year. And that is A Torch Against the Night by Saba Tahir. Uh, this is the sequel to An Ember in the Ashes, which I read and reviewed last year. I'll put the link to that down below, because I'm not going to go into too much detail about that here. You can go and watch it if you want. Um, and it was one of my it was one of my favourite books of last year, um, and I've been anticipating this book ever since. And I was very kindly sent this proof copy from Harper Voyager last week. Started reading it straight away, and I am obsessed. It is so so good I'm literally I only received this like Wednesday of last week and I'm over halfway through already and this is a beast a beast of a book that tells you how much I'm liking it I don't want to talk much about what it's about really because it is a sequel and I will be doing a review but I just wanted to throw it in here so that is Torch Against the Night by Subba to here go and read An Ember in the Ashes if you haven't yet get yourself ready for this release it comes out on the 8th of September so not too long to go now 
So now onto the books that I don't actually have physical copies of, but I will put a little picture up somewhere of each of the covers. So, going back to my list again, um, the first one is The Finding of Martha Lost by Caroline Wallace, which looks like this. This is a contemporary mystery book about a young girl who, when she's a baby, she's abandoned at a train station in a suitcase and she is basically told that if she ever leaves this train station it will crumble around her so she never leaves she works in the lost property office um, and she has this ability that when she touches the lost things she can see how they came to be lost and who lost them and she loves doing this job and she lives with this person that she calls mother who has brought her up for all these years um, and she then one day receives this book um, through the post and inside there is an inscription that says your mother lies and her mother had always told her that she came in on a train that came from France to Liverpool she's at the Liverpool train station now but in this book it shows that there is no train that goes from France to Liverpool so suddenly she's like hold on this person I've called mother has lied to me for all these years and it's about her discovering who she is this was such a beautiful beautiful book <clears throat> you guys know what I'm like I don't I'm not a massive fan of contemporary I get bored quite easy but I couldn't put this down I read this within a few days the writing was wonderful the characters were wonderful and I just it kept me entranced I just I wanted to know what was going to happen to this little girl. It reminded me a lot of a Roald Dahl story, um, like a kind of Matilda, that kind of Matilda-esque kind of story. Um, and it was just, it was just fantastically wonderful. The characters were these really vibrant, different <clears throat> characters that I loved reading about. And yeah, I just thought this book was wonderful. If you're wanting something a little bit more gentle, much more of a summer read for this time of year, then that is the book that I would pick up. It was it was amazing. The next one is actually a short story um, called The Octopus Nest and it's by Sophie Hanna. It looks like this. And this is about a married couple who become really like creeped out when they realise that there is this woman in all of their holiday photographs in the background of these photos like right from their most recent holiday to like many many years ago she is just in the background of them all and they're like what the hell this book properly creeped me out for a short story short stories I'm a bit hit and miss with because you know you've got to pack a beginning middle and end into something that is only you know like a hundred pages or whatever which is difficult to make good I think but this one was so good, it was well rounded, it had a good twist and as I say it was really creepy I read it within about half an hour and um, yeah I, I really really enjoyed this I thought it was, this would be a good little story to read like on um, Halloween night really I really enjoyed it, um, so there's that one next is Burning by Danielle Rollins, which looks like this. This book is a young adult uh, mystery thriller, but it's also got kind of horror elements in there, I'd say. Um, <clears throat> and it's about a girl who is, she's in uh, like a juvenile detention centre, serving her last three months of her sentence. And the story starts when a new inmate arrives, and she's super young, this new inmate. But she arrives, like, chained up. She has every guard around her taking her into the prison, um, which they've never had before. No inmate has ever arrived chained up. And she is taken straight to the seg block, which is basically... Or the seg unit, which is basically where the most dangerous prisoners are kept so the psychologically disturbed and there's all these like whispers going around about her that she killed all her family and things like that 
um, and people seem to be like really like scared of her. But our story really starts when our main character is our, whose name I can't remember now for the life of me. But she's asked to mentor this girl when she comes out of the seg block to like help her fit in a bit more. But when she comes out of the seg block, weird things start to happen. Um, and at the same time, a new lady turns up to the prison who says she um, has this program for people coming out of prison that basically gets them back into, back into education, jobs, things like that. But she is not who she appears to be either. She is close, there is a link between her and this new girl. Um, this was so good. It reminded me a little bit of Carrie by Stephen King. There were some moments where it really reminded me of that. And again, it was really creepy. It was very different. Um, it, it wasn't what I was expecting it to be, but in a good way. It wasn't like anything I'd read before. And there's chapters that are set actually in the seg block when our main character is put down there for a reason I won't go into. Um, and they were terrifying, literally terrifying. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed this book. Again, it was another one I read super, super quickly. Uh, but yeah, I really, really recommend this. Fantastic, fantastic YA uh, mystery, that one. Uh, the next one is Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris, which looks like this. I'm pretty sure that you will have heard stuff about this because it's been a very highly talked about book this year. Um, it is an adult psychological thriller and it is about a married couple who on the outside they seem to have this perfect marriage. He, I'm really sorry but I can't remember the names of any of these characters. How bad is that? And because I don't have them physically I can't, I can't look so I'm just going to say main characters. I hope that's okay. But anyway, they're a married couple and on the outside they have this perfect marriage. He is the perfect husband, he's gorgeous, he gives her everything she wants. She comes across as the perfect housewife, like home cooking, having loads of dinner parties, but behind closed doors, as the title states, something is not quite right in this marriage. It is set in two time periods, so you've got the present, and then you've got the past, which starts from when they first met and leads up to what has brought them to this point now. It does say in the synopsis, actually, what is wrong with this marriage. I'm not going to say in case you want to read it without looking at that. But I did read it, and I have to say, it didn't spoil it for me knowing. Still so much happened. It was really dark, really kind of scary to think that actually this situation is proper, probably happening to people um, in real life, really creepy to think that. And it's sort of questions like, do you really ever completely know people that you, that you love and you trust in a way? Um, I just, I really loved this. I was gripped to this book from the first page. I could not put it down. I just wanted to know what was gonna happen. Uh, I feel like I said that a lot with these books, but yeah, I just, I was really gripped by this one. If you want a dark psychological thriller, um, that is definitely the one to go for. Um, and the last book that I have chosen is another one that I read quite recently, and that is Defender by Graham McNamee, which looks like this. Uh, and this is a young adult uh, thriller as well about a girl um, called Tiny. Well, her nickname is Tiny because she's like really tall. And she, her dad owns a block of flats, which is where they live as well. And one day there is like a leak uh, in the basement and her dad sends her down there to see to try and see where it's coming from and she finds uh, the body of a young girl in the wall somebody had like put it in the wall before the refurbishments were done and 
she runs she runs straight away upstairs to go and tell her dad what she's seen and he's like right I'll go and have a look straight away he goes back down there comes back up and says there is no body but she knows that she sees something and so she starts to question like why is my father lying to me did he put this girl there um, and again this was another really one of those books that just grips you and um, I read this I think I read this within like two days uh, it's it's a very easy read the writing isn't like the most fantastic thing I'll ever read but it's a really gripping gripping easy story to get through really enjoyed it loved the twists so those are my favorite books of the year so far do let me know down below what your favourite books of the year so far are. So far are. Um, because I'm, I'm, I really love watching these types of videos as well. I usually get loads of books that I put onto my wish list to pick up. Um, I hope you guys have too. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you all in my next one. Bye!